chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? The chickens and hen song is very easy to learn. If I sing a line, can you copy it back to me? Who stole my chickens and my hens? You'll go. Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Shall we practice that again? Who stole my chickens and my hens? You'll go. Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Now let's try it all the way through together. Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Now, have a think. How many claps are there at the end of the first line? Have you got an answer? Let's sing it and find out. Who stole my chickens and my hens? There were three, weren't there? Let's have a think about the second line. Let's sing that together. Who stole my chickens and my hens? That one's three as well, isn't it? The middle lines are slightly different though. Have a think, see if you can work out how many claps there are after the next line. Let's try singing it together. Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? So that bit, there were two one clap, groups of one claps, aren't there? Let's sing that again. Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? And then the last line, we're back to three claps again. Who stole my chickens and my hens? So as well as this being a good song to sing for fun anyway, this is a song that you can take it in turns with somebody to do the clapping and to do the singing. So maybe if you've got a brother or sister or mum or dad or somebody else in your house that you'd like to sing with, um, you can take it in turns. So, unfortunately I haven't got anybody with me, so I'm going to be both people. Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? <laughs> and then you can switch over, so you're taking it in turns. Now, if there's more than two of you, you can start to have some fun with this, and the more people, the better. With a big group of people, you can each take it in turns to sing a line of the song, and then you share out the claps. So, the first person sings, Who stole my chickens and my hens? And the next people, clap, clap, clap. And then the fifth person sings the next line, Who stole my chickens and my hens? Clap, clap, clap. And it goes around the circle. Now, if there's an odd number, you will be clapping or singing alternately. So you won't necessarily get the same bits each time. And the aim of the game is to keep it going to a steady pulse and not stop or miss your turn at all, or sing when you should be clapping or clap when you should be singing. So I'm going to sing the song one more time and you can sing with me, seeing if you can play the game with your friends. Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? 
Who stole my chickens and my hens? Hands again. Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Who stole my chickens? Who stole my hens? Who stole my chickens and my hens? Did you notice we got faster the second time? Each time you go around and sing the song, get a bit faster so it gets harder and harder and harder. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello everybody. My name's Melissa and I'm one of the brass teachers with BMT. I'm here today to teach you a little bit about timbre. Timbre is a word that we use to talk about how and why different instruments sound different even when they're playing the same note. And timbre also helps us to identify instruments and perhaps why we like the sound of some of them and we don't so much like the sound of others. Now, first of all, why might our instruments sound different to each other? Sometimes it depends on what an instrument is made out of or how they produce their notes. The size of the instrument might be included there's lots of other factors too. For example, my instrument, the trombone, is made out of metal. It also has a metal mouthpiece. And in order to make a noise in my instrument, I must buzz my lips to make a sound. And then my instrument makes that sound bigger and comes out the other end at the bell. I'm going to play you a short piece of music on my instrument so that we can try to choose some words to best describe the timbre of the trombone. So hopefully some answers are going to come up on the screen here and we're going to try to work out if the trombone sounds brassy, reedy, bright, dull, rich or thin. Now I'll tell you three of these answers are right and three of these answers are not correct. I'll play you the tune first, so you can have a little listen and try to decide. This is the Cornish floral dance. You might not have heard this before. <laughs> and full or thin and small. For me, I think that my instrument sounds brassy. I think it sounds bright. That's part of the, those two words to do with the metal that it's made from. And I think it sounds rich and full because it's quite big. Now, I wanted to show you what sort of other things could change the timbre on my instrument. Here I have a piece of equipment. This is called a mute. Now this is a straight mute and it's also made of metal. This goes in the, in the end of my instrument, in the bell, and it attaches with these corks which help it stick to the inside without leaving any damage. It goes in the end where the sound comes out and it will alter the sound of my instrument. It's going to sound different now. So now we're going to get a different set of adjectives. Now we're going to decide whether it sounds thin, or rich, if it sounds dull or bright, metallic, sonorous. These are some of the words you get to choose from. And again, three of them are right and three of them are not. Let's see if we agree. I'm going to play you the same piece of music, the Cornish floral dance, this time with the mute in the end, so you can hear how it sounds different. <sighs> Thank you. 
So hopefully you can say it does sound quite different to the first time. Now, what do we think? Does it sound rich like it did before or a little thinner? Does it sound bright like it did before or duller? And does it sound as sonorous and full as it did before or a little metallic this time? I think that the mute changes my sound. It makes me sound thin instead of rich. It makes me sound a little bit more dull rather than bright. And also it's extra metal. So I think it sounds metallic instead of sonorous. That's the word we use for full sound. And that also is changed because it's blocking the pathway for the air to come out a little bit more. So that's a little bit of information about timbre and timbre on a trombone in the brass family. I hope you've learned something from this today and maybe you can find some instruments or household objects maybe and work out what the timbre of those are. If you tap a saucepan with a spoon, does it sound dull or bright? Have a little go, have fun and we'll see you next time.